Right, we're going to start today's video about a driver by talking about irons. The ZX5 and the ZX7 irons were, they were a massive shock for me in terms of how they performed, how they felt, how they looked, how they were priced. They literally ticked every box. It was a 10 out of 10 review. But we've now got the ZX5 and ZX7 drivers. And my question is, and it's a big question, is why would you buy a ZX5 or a ZX7 driver. It's yeah, it's a but, and it's a big but. These two drivers retail at 399 for the ZX5, 419 for the ZX7. They're the best price I can find on both of these products. Now you've got to compare that to a couple of other options. And look at these. You've got the G410 from Ping, you've got the TaylorMade Sim, both retail at the same price, but then consider the Cobra driver is in at 349, and the Mizuno driver, the latest driver from Mizuno in 2020, is only 299. That's a huge difference, and I think it's an issue. And then there's the issue of shaft options. If we look, this is a Strix and Fit cart. We've got a fair few options on the irons, but we've got two, four, six, seven. One of them is already shafted up one of their heads. So you've got eight choices of shaft in terms of driver option. And compare that to some of these others. I think a standard cart for Callaway is 14 different shaft options. That'll be similar for TaylorMade. Same for Mizuno, and not too dissimilar for Titleist. Now with a camera placed there, you need to be either extremely confident or extremely stupid. And, uh, well, I'm not too sure which one it is, but we have it at the camera anyway. So we discussed the money. It's not exactly jumping out at me in terms of price. We've looked at the shaft option, and it's limited. You're then talking about how it looks in terms of shelf appeal. And I think for me, the ZX5 and 7, they're not really jumping out at me. It doesn't say a great deal. It doesn't do, it doesn't do a great deal at all, to be quite honest with you. But that's a very personal choice. And for others, maybe it does appeal. But what I'm not particularly interested in is the fact that it doesn't even give off that feel of a quality made product. Nothing like, again, what it does when I look at the irons by comparison. So there's a lot of issues that are building up, but we all know we can dismiss all of that if this thing performs, but it's now got to really perform to make me overcome all those issues and make me buy it. Yeah, I've been pretty harsh so far, that's fair to say, but look, this is a product review and these are the questions we've got to be asking ourselves when a new product comes to market. Surely they're the same question that you'd be asking yourself. So I'm struggling right now as to where this fits in. And don't forget, I haven't even hit a golf ball yet. But I'm looking at the reasons to why I want to try it, why I want to have a go, why I want it to perform so well. I'm going to start with the first positive, and there could be a few more to follow. But from the top line, I love the carbon crown they've got. It is, again, very, very similar to others that are out there. It almost seems to have followed suit. I could place a few alongside this and they would look very very similar so it's nothing new again it's nothing too innovative but it does look good gloss finish sits nice at a dress i'm going to hit the first ball and i'm going to see what i think of in terms of how this thing sounds and let's hope we can continue with some positives I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll hit a few more balls before I comment on that. That was an okay strike, it was a little bit loud for my liking, but let me go and collect some data and then we'll give, hopefully, a few more bits of positive feedback for this ZX7 and I'm going to try the ZX5. It's a much better ball. Decent ball flight. We could be about to turn a corner, let's see. Right, in terms of technology and a marketing story, it's kind of what I like about Strixon, but what I also don't like. There's no major story. Now, I know a lot of people can get upset by the kind of big grand marketing claims that a lot of brands make. So on that side of the coin, I suppose you can say, well, they kind of underplay it, but at the same time, they don't really sell the product to me that greatly. So it's a kind of like, 
it's very underwhelming again. The most exciting part of their story, if you like, is the rebound frame. They're claiming it to be, as everybody does, incredibly fast off the face rebound frame, obviously is sort of uh, very much self-explanatory. There's a different weighting system between the two club heads and the ZX-5 is the more forgiving of the two. The ZX-7, the lower spinning and clearly aimed at supposedly two different players. But that's it. There's no other great story behind it. So for a lot of people, that's very much a positive. But on the flip side, come on, Strix, and do us a bit of a job and sell this thing to me, will you? Ah, it's a decent ball again. I'm going to throw some positives in there because, uh, yes, there are some. And uh, I don't really... I'm not going to look at data as yet, but what I, I, know, I wouldn't even be persuaded otherwise because for me, the ZX7, I much prefer... I think um, I would always put myself in the category of the kind of ZX5 in terms of that, the, the more forgiving of the two. Um, but I don't know what it is. And again, I can't pinpoint in terms of exactly why, but for me, um, I get on much better with this ZX7. Um, I like the sound of it. I like the way it sits behind the ball again, which was a positive. And uh, the performance for me seems, I, I'm hitting it relatively um, decent. I'm not spraying this thing all over the place right now. Uh, I would always suggest that's down to the swing you've got on the day rather than just how good the club is, but we'll see. And uh, the ball is going out there, but I think that's enough. Let's get down to dry ball data and see if the, the performance is good enough to make me overcome some of the issues that I've already highlighted, and uh, we'll see. Right, so back where we started, and that question still remains. I may have been a little bit harsh in this drive review, but to me, like I said halfway through, I'm asking the questions that surely you must ask as a punter when you're going to buy something. And for me, why would I buy this driver when there are so many almost obstacles put in my way? So no matter how good it performs, and we'll get to performance now, I might be at a point where we don't even get there because of all the issues that have been raised. Drive all data in front of you now. And this driver did well, it performed really well. My driving stats are sort of 235 to 245 is the best I can do in terms of carry. Ball speed in relation to club head speed was good, spin was good, launch was good. Everything you would want from a driver, it did. So I've got no criticisms in terms of its performance. What I have an issue with is me getting there, is me getting to the point where would I actually pick this up and, and say, let me have a go. Would I go into the driving range and put this on my wish list? I'm not sure because, like I said, there are so many obstacles that we've already highlighted in this video, and I'm not going to go and repeat those uh, again. But many of those things are subjective. I might have it completely wrong, and for you, the looks might be good, the price point might be good. Like I said, there are may, may be many things why you might uh, think differently than I did. But for me, it's such a disappointment when the ZX5 and zx 7 eyes were just so good They've fallen away short with this driver offering, for me at least, this time round. But the question is, um, if you've bought the driver or you're considering buying the driver, then tell me why you did or why you're considering it. Stick those comments down below and uh, we'll get a bit of a conversation going. Anyway, as ever, thank you for joining me. Appreciate your time and uh, I'll see you all soon.